everybody, this is Chris with Packet Pioneer. Just wanted to show you a quick case study involving TCP resets. Now the symptom that was happening with this particular user was that they couldn't connect to new services. Some services were working, they were able to get out to CNN, ESPN, uh, NFL, whatever other uh, websites that they wanted to, but then new connections simply weren't working. So we grabbed a quick trace file and we saw some interesting things. So first of all, we just opened up this trace and if you take a look over to the right, you can quickly see that since I have my color bars on here working, we can see quite a bit of red. Now that shows us the TCP uh, events. Those are the, the bad things that are happening in the trace. It also shows us where in the trace file those things are happening. It's a nice new feature of Wireshark 2.0 and beyond. So if I can just scroll down, I start to see, I'm not going to zone in or, or hone in just yet on any of these specific resets, but I'm just going to scroll down and take a look at that reset behavior. I can see that when I have a new SYN, if I come down here and find a couple of them, if I come down here, this is a, a new SYN request. Just below that, I see a couple of resets. I see a couple more SYNs, then I see more resets. So it becomes pretty clear pretty fast that new connections to services, whichever services those may be, are being reset. Now the next question becomes, are these resets real? Are they actually being sent by that system? Or is something in the middle sending these resets? And there's a quick way to examine that and that's what I wanted to show you today. So if I take a look at one of these uh, re one of these SINs, I'm just going to focus in on this one that I have. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to come over to Conversation Filter TCP. So that'll set a filter for just those packets that are involved between these two endpoints on that TCP port. So here I see a SIN, see a reset, the client tries again, sends a, a SIN. This is called a spurious retransmission because we saw the original packet and we saw an acknowledgement for that packet. However, we went ahead and sent another packet. So uh, we can see this SYN is attempting to be retransmitted, and we see that reset behavior every single time. So let's take a look at whether that re or who that reset really came from. So if I take a look at the reset and I go into the TCP header, I can just quickly check that this is indeed a reset. So come down here to the flags. I see the reset bit is set. Now, if I come here to the IP header, this is where the keys really come in. This is where the, the key information is for us for troubleshooting this problem. If I come down to the IP header and I go to the time to live, now the time to live here is showing me 64. Now what that means is that this packet has not been routed. Time to lives typically start with 255, 128, 64. In a handful of other cases, we see different numbers, but those are the big three, 255, 128, and 64. Now, if I capture this same packet after it traveled through its first router, then this would have been 63. One router more into the path, 62, 61, and so on. In fact, in a second here, I'm going to go take a look at a conversation that was working, and we can take a look at that time to live behavior. So I can see that these resets are non, not yet routed. These are not coming in from this actual IP address that's being claimed here, 139, 254, whatever that is. So that's interesting to see. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click the time to live and I'm going to go, go ahead and apply this as a column. That information is useful to me so that when I remove my filter, now I can quickly see what the TTL is and determine which packets are routed and which ones are not. So I can see here that some packets that are coming in from some systems, 53, so these are routed packets. So likely that 53 started at 64, and I've just captured it after it's passed through 11 routers. It's been decremented 11 times. So I can see some packets that are coming into this client have been routed and some have not. And these resets, in fact, if I go to tcp.flags, reset equals one, that'll set a filter for all resets in this trace file. And if I just scroll through, I can see the time to lives 
are always 64, 128, well, 128 in the opposite direction, right? So these, the, this, these 64s show me that these resets have not been routed. So the next question becomes, what is sending these? Well, to do that, it's nice to, to come up here to the MAC address information, the uh, Layer 2 info, and I can see that the Layer 2 source MAC is this sonic wall. So by taking a look at that sonic wall, we were able to find out that it was only handling so many connections per user, uh, and it was resetting any, num any connections beyond the limit per user. So when we went into the configuration for this sonic wall, we found out that it was only handling about 30 to 40 connections. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head, but somewhere in that number per user. And any additional connections that were attempted from a user were being reset. So we went ahead and increased that number up to a more acceptable range, and we found that this reset behavior went away. So this was a configuration problem on the local sonic wall, something that TCP resets pointed us to, and we were able to determine by the time to live that these were not being sent by this original station, but by something much closer to us. So that was just a quick case study. Hopefully that was helpful in examining TCP reset behavior. I hope this was useful to you and look forward to seeing you on another video. Take care, everybody.